I was asked to rank the demons in Inuyasha from weakest to strongest in the comments, so here we are. In this series there are hundreds of different yokai, so ranking all of them would take me all week, but as a general rule, demons who have no basis in animal, plant, or human designs tend to be the weakest. Just think about the mini-demons who are fused with Naraku, or the hordes that he controlled. Those kind of worm-like yokai who are definitely the weakest out there. After those, we have plant and animal yokai, which tend to be much stronger, and standing atop all demons everywhere are usually the Dai yokai, or great demons, and demons who look like humans. As such, today we'll be talking about the 10 strongest demons in Inuyasha. If you're excited for more Inuyasha content, or Yashahime next month, be sure to leave a like and suggest content that you'd like to see. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you can see more content when it comes out. With that being said, there are literally tons of demons in Inuyasha, so if I missed one, or you think the order should be swapped around, let me know in the comments down below. For now, let's get into it. Kicking off this list, we have Moriomaru. Moriomaru was named the perfect monster and was created by Hakudoshi, and was essentially a demonic power suit for the infant. This yokai had tons of abilities ranging from regeneration, ability absorption, demon absorption, flight, and body manipulation, as well as being able to use other demons' abilities. He could create miasma, he has a nearly impenetrable hide, can create diamond shards to launch at his opponents, and even produce fire or lightning. Moriomaru had a slew of different offensive and defensive abilities, and it was near impossible to actually deal with or destroy him. Honestly, I would have said that this dude was much stronger than Naraku at the time they fought, but in the end he ended up simply getting absorbed by Naraku. Next up, we have the Demon of the Jewel. This is the final antagonist of the series, and they make up one of the feuding sides on the inside of the Shikon Jewel. And, by extension, they have their evil form, Nagatsuhi. While this demon might not be the strongest physically, it was strong enough to keep up with and eventually kill Midoriko. The biggest strength that this demon possesses is immortality, as they exist inside the jewel. The only way for this demon to be destroyed was by slashing the light within the jewel with a Meido, something which involves both finding a way into the jewel and being able to create Meido, which is not exactly common. Basically, this demon is just a massive horde which will infinitely regenerate. However, their real power is in their ability to manipulate and corrupt those who hold the jewel, even manipulating Naraku throughout the series. And their physical form, Magatsuhi, would be more of a discussion in this video, but according to the wiki, he's not a demon, but instead is just the embodiment of living evil. So there's that, I guess? Like I said, this demon isn't anything crazy, but the manipulation that they produce throughout the series and being able to keep up with Midoriko and control Naraku counts for something. Speaking of Naraku, this might be a controversial opinion, but I'm gonna drop him at number 8. Don't get me wrong, Naraku is crazy powerful, and like I said, there are hundreds of demons in Inuyasha, so number 8 isn't so bad. Despite this, he isn't really that powerful compared to the demons above him in this list. He spends most of the series being damaged or hiding, or using other people to fight in his stead because he isn't particularly powerful himself. His abilities include shape-shifting, flight, regeneration, body modification, mind control, and creating curses. His most impactful ability might be creating incarnations, which... <clears throat> Shameless self-promotion, but you can click the card at the end of the video or in the top right corner to look at my Ranking Naraku's Incarnation video for information on them. Anyways, he also has access to Miasma, Poison Tentacles, Demon Puppets, Poison Insects, and a ton more. At the very least, Naraku has a ton of versatility. Among all of this, his greatest strength is manipulation, though, as Naraku is able to trick and lie his way to get just about anyone on his side for at least a moment. Unfortunately, also leaving him with many enemies. Of course, Naraku gets his hand on the jewel and gets a major power upgrade, which allows him to transform and magnifies all of his abilities to a massive extent. With that being said, though, while he has a ton of regenerative powers and is stronger, He's consistently being blown back by both Sashomaru and Inuyasha, and being left with only a scrap of himself remaining. Honestly, it seems like he's more annoying than powerful in this form, to be honest. With the canon big bads out of the way, let's talk about some movies. In the fire of the Mystic Island, we meet Shintoshin. 
These were four war gods being Kyora, Jura, Ryura, and Gora. They fuse together to their true form and become immensely powerful, combining all of the war gods' strengths together. For reference, just Ryura was able to generate and control electricity and wind, as well as being a master swordsman, extremely durable, and strong enough to push Inuyasha beyond his limits. Jura was an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat and was a cannoneer who had a powerful thunder cannon. Kyura could control fire and generate a flock of flaming birds. She could regenerate, fly, and even teleport or make barriers. Then we have Gora, who has defensive capabilities strong enough to take a Windscar with ease. Once combined, they are only defeated by using the Backlash Wave, which sent their own strength back at them. Next on the list, we have Ryukotse. This was an extremely powerful dragon daiyokai who was one of Inuyasha's father, Toga's, rivals. While Toga himself was stronger than Ryukotse, it wasn't by very much. Toga would be mortally wounded before being able to pierce Ryukotse with one of his fangs and stealing his powers. These powers included energy bullets that were strong enough to damage Tetsaiga's sheath barrier, Super Energy Bullets, which was a version many times stronger, as well as nearly having an invincible body, which would always rise unless it was shattered and cut to pieces. 200 years after being sealed, Naraku would awaken him, and Inuyasha would need to slay him to power up his Tetsaiga. Despite being much weaker than Toga himself, Inuyasha was able to steal a win by using the Backlash Wave. While normally there is very little that Inuyasha could do against this monster, using the Backlash Wave against Ryukotse's Super Energy Bullet and reflecting it back towards the demon with the Wind Scar on top of it would be more than enough to actually take the demon down. This was quite literally a monster so powerful that only he could destroy himself. Moving on to another movie yokai, we have Kaguya from the Castle Beyond the Looking Glass. So let's start with the classic ability of Immortality. After absorbing a Celestial Maiden, she gained Immortality and Eternal Youth. That's right, even if Kaguya is obliterated down to nothing, she will still be able to reform. Beyond her minor Immortality thing, she also has a powerful connection to nature, even being able to affect the moon and keep it full or change its color. She can manipulate trees to ensnare people, and this even extends to trees which have become flooring. Kaguya can read people's hearts, teleport, create illusions, has telekinesis, she can levitate, produce barriers, and most importantly, she can absorb people and demons and gain their abilities and their strengths. She can reverse the momentum of objects, produce burning spheres, and freeze time, in a specific area at least. If someone touches the light around the ring that she makes, they're frozen in time but still awake and aware. But that's not all. She can disperse energy like the Windscar, create blasts or whips of light, grant wishes, seal people inside her mirror's pocket dimension, and make black holes to defend herself. This character was immensely OP. If I'm being perfectly honest, normally I would put her way higher on the list, but most people ahead of her have some kind of dimensional ability, which would probably remove her, such as a Mado. We don't really have any evidence that this would kill her due to when the movie was released, but I would imagine that sending her to the Underworld might be similar to the Wind Tunnel. Honestly, I don't fully know. And if not, maybe the Bakusaiga would be able to take her down by basically wearing her away. But even then, she might just be able to recover. So for now, I'm going to put her at number 5, with the caveat that if the Meido and the Bakusaiga can't affect her, she'd probably be number 2 or 1. Coming in at number 4, we have Inuyasha himself. While Inuyasha is decently strong, I would say that most of his power comes from the Tetsaiga. On his own, he can solidify his blood into claws, on top of his already powerful claws, but again, the Tetsaiga is really where it's at. His bread and butter with the Tetsaiga is the Wind Scar, which allows him to slay up to 100 demons in one swing. But the biggest strength of the Tetsaiga is the Backlash Wave an attack which can send an opponent's energy back at them with the added power of the Windscar. Something which allows him to take down enemies like Ryukotse despite being much weaker at the time. The blade can assimilate abilities of the yokai that are destroyed by it, rejects being destroyed itself, and has been upgraded from base to red to diamond to dragon scale over the story, 
gaining enhanced abilities along the way, also gaining the Flaming Tetsaiga, which was only seen briefly, and the Black Tetsaiga, which can create Mado. In terms of defense, Inuyasha can use the Sheath of the Tetsaiga to defend himself from just about anything, and his Cloak of the Fire Rat protects him from fire. Of course, if separated from the sword and pushed into a corner, Inuyasha can always turn full demon, which gives him massive strength and speed at the exchange of his logic and judgment. In general, Inuyasha is a powerful demon, but I wouldn't say that on his own he's really miles ahead of someone like Koga. But with the Tetsaiga, I'd say that he could take on just about any opponent on even footing. In third place, we have Inuyasha's father, Toga. Inu no Taisho. While we don't get many glimpses of Toga, we only really know that he was one of the strongest demons of his era, and acted as Japan's defender. He took out opponents like the Panther King, Lord Hyoga, and Ryukotsu. He can shapeshift, he's a master swords fighter, has incredible foresight, and can produce barriers like the one on Tetsaiga's sheath, which is nearly impenetrable. Toga used the Tetsaiga, which he could use to create wind scars and backlash waves, as well as producing Meido, and the Tensega, which could revive the dead. His third sword, Soonga, was a sword of hell. It could launch an attack called the Goku Ryuha, which could produce black and purple tornadoes which annihilated everything in their path. Miyoga refers to this attack as the Dragon of Hell. The sword could also reanimate anyone that it cut. The corpses would revive as mindless zombies who would listen to Soonga's wielder or just attack anything around them. Toga was kind of set as a benchmark for the series. He was designed to be this iconic, insanely powerful demon of legends, and no one could compete with him. And while Inuyasha definitely gets close at the end of the series, I'm not sure that he ever truly surpasses his father. But that is up for debate though. In second place, we have our final movie villain. Menomaru. Menomaru has a ton of magic, however, he often refuses to use it. And to be fair, he honestly doesn't need to. With just a normal sword, he was able to completely overtake Inuyasha with no effort, even blocking the Windscar, which is something that no other demon has done without a barrier or a special weapon. When it comes to combat with no powers, Menomaru is easily the strongest in the series. Menomaru can also fly, or turn himself into a cloud of pink dust, or he can simply just teleport through demonic moths. He can manipulate nature to restrain people, and can manipulate insects as well. On top of all this, Menomaru is able to automatically self-resurrect. By drawing on his father's power, he can absorb unlimited energy to heal entirely or revive himself an infinite number of times, calling himself invincible and immortal. Finally, he also has the ability to control anyone who has one of Hari's shells inside of them. And all of that is base Menomaru. As a member of the Hyoga clan, Menomaru can descend into a chrysalis and absorb the accumulated power of his ancestry, sort of like one for all. This adds his own power to his father's and likely makes him exceed Toga in doing so. By pouring his own aura into the Tree of Ages, he can siphon energy from future generations as well, and power up his transformation. Manomaru can create fire bolts and pink lightning, or charge up for a demonic beam. He can also absorb souls to transform faster as well, and once he does transform into Lord Hyoga, he becomes exponentially stronger, to the point that just his aura makes it impossible for Inuyasha to use a Windscar. He has web breath in this form, he can fire energy beams strong enough to make a mile-long gash in the earth, he can extend his fingers to use them to strike like bullets, and finally he can summon demons. Much like Ryukotse, Inuyasha had to rely on the backlash wave to destroy this demon, as only Minomaru was strong enough to wipe himself out. However, he also needed to combine this power with Kagome's sacred arrow to even be able to use the attack because of the power difference. Much like Kaguya, this demon is essentially immortal. But the difference in actual power and impact between Kaguya and Hyoga is pretty immense. Yes, she's strong and much more durable than Hyoga is overall, but the power behind Minomaru is on a whole other level. The only one on this list who might be able to take Minomaru down on his own, specifically with his Baku Saiga, is Sashomaru. And our number one demon is obviously Shippo. No, of course not. The demon that I consider to probably be the strongest in the series, although, as I've mentioned, 
totally open for debate, is Seshomaru. Seshomaru is by all rights faster, stronger, and probably smarter than Inuyasha, as he's a full demon. He has acidic claws that can melt through walls or people. He can fly and resist poison. He can teleport or create light whips. And on top of that, he can turn into a giant dog demon, which technically makes him a good boy. The downside to Sashomaru is that he is extremely proud, and that can get him into some not-so-great situations. And it's this reason that Inuyasha usually gets wins against him. And yes, Inuyasha does win most of their fights, but that isn't really Inuyasha on his own. It's Inuyasha with Tetsaiga. So let's compare some of Sashomaru's weapons. With Tensega, Sashomaru can bring people back from the dead once, or kill the undead. It's said that this sword can save 100 lives in a single swing. The sword can even protect Sashomaru in extreme cases with a black mist. However, it is never a flawless defense and often just keeps him alive in most cases. Which is all good and great, but we aren't really here to save people, so let's move on to Tokijin. This sword was created with the fangs of Goshinki, the demon which bit through Tetsaiga. This blade could shoot energy attacks and create a barrier that eradicates anything it touches, on top of being able to create a massive lightning stream in the form of a dragon to attack his foes. Of course, this sword breaks against Moriomaru, so we should probably just move on to his final and strongest sword, Bakusaiga. The sword manifests itself in Sashomaru's hand during his battle with Magatsuhi, and it marks his graduation into a fully-fledged Daiyokai. Torosai explains that the fact that this blade manifested itself suggests that Sashomaru has surpassed his father, as Toga had to have his swords created. The Bakusaiga can decompose and erode any living thing that it cuts, and this erosion would spread. Moroku says that if Niraku absorbed something that was being corroded, the corrosion would pass to Naraku as well. Sashomaru can even fire off this corrosion wave in an explosion which would slay a thousand demons in one slash. This is definitely similar to Tetsaiga, but Rumiko Takahashi has said that this far exceeds the Backlash Wave. And yes, it's true that Inuyasha can redirect attacks with the Backlash Wave, and he can often defeat stronger enemies because of it, but Sashomaru is just flat out stronger on his own, and his sword is better. I would assume that the Bakusaiga could probably take out Lord Hyoga, but again, that's kind of up for debate, as many things on this list are as we haven't had the interactions and simply have to base it off other examples. Like I said, while Inuyasha might be a pretty terrifying demon with Tetsaiga in his hands, Sashomaru is more than powerful on his own to overcome just about any opponent. And there you have it, my list of the top 10 strongest demons in Inuyasha. I would love to know what you guys think as this is kind of a strange list to make as we don't see many of the demons fight, and with Inuyasha being such a long series, and a few of the entries on this list being movie villains, it's kind of difficult to place them exactly, especially when immortality is being brought into the discussion. If you guys enjoyed this video though, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more Inuyasha content. Thank you again for suggesting the video. And with all that being said, I will see you in the next one, but until then, remember to stay excellent.